schools of thought today. We hear psychiatrists and sociologists, we get doctors, we get lawyers, even priests, ministers, rabbis, you name it. Everybody has a way to tell you how to make life easy. The word stress has become part of our vocabulary for the last decade, not so much because of Ronald Reagan and George Bush, but mainly because the intricacies of our life has really grown. The intricacies such as technology, challenge, competition, you name it. Even if you're uh, homeless, you're still in a very competitive circus in this world. We're going to talk with a gentleman who deals with this, a gentleman who tries to relieve people of their stress, their problems, their pain, or at least he tries to alter them so that they don't suffer as much. His name is Omar, actually Adisa Omar, and uh, he is head of a group called, in fact, he founded the group, uh, Ecologics. And uh, this is a study of the International Association of Ecologics in Washington. In Washington, New York, he's worked with the environment and with so many study groups. When we talk with you, Omar, uh, just let me give you a rundown. Uh, let me give my audience rather a rundown of some of the things you, that you deal with. You're saying here through certain types of therapy, certain types of, uh, of, of uh, what training and learning and meditation one can relieve themselves of allergies, arthritis, backaches, constipation, depression, dermatitis, uh, headaches, heart problems, hypertension, impotency. My goodness, they had commercials about it being impotent at a certain age. Insomnia, weight loss, gain, nervousness, stress, sexually transmitted disease. And you're saying that these things can be altered if you suffer from any of these things. These can be altered how? We don't want to create a panacea, but what we do want to say is that the word stress means not to be at ease. And what level of stress in our lives is something that we need to deal with. And that is what we want to focus on, is the level of stress in our lives and how we can deal with that. There is no panacea. All these problems you outlined are problems that we have control of if we have control of our lives. So what we want to really focus on is how to gain control of our lives, how to gain more discipline and control, mastery over what we do. And in that way, we can avert and somehow control some of these problems that seem to manifest. We call them dis-ease or disease. But it's really the, the dis in it is that we are not being able to feel at ease because we're so affected by what we face in life. But there are some religions that say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Some religions say you shouldn't, well, actually you shouldn't have an operation or you should not uh, even call the doctor. And some religions will even go against their, uh, or hold it, uh, an offense towards their members if they do go to the hospital. Well, we don't want to suggest that people don't go to doctors and psychiatrists and psychologists and these kinds of things. These all have a role in the healing uh, profession. But what we want to say is that there is an area which we call preventative health care. What can we do to prevent something before it happens? And in that sense, stress management and the ability to control uh, ourselves and what we do in our lives is very important. All right. Now, business folks. People drink coffee in the morning. Coffee has caffeine in it. Some people drink coffee because they say, I can't stop my day without that cup of coffee. I can't go to bed. If I go to bed with a cup of coffee, I can't sleep at night. But I've got to have that coffee. Or I've got to have that cigarette. If I don't have that cigarette, life will just end right now. Although smoking a cigarette may end your life, too. Uh, are we, as Americans, are we too crutched money? Very much so. And we pick up our crutches because of, again, what we face in life. Everything that we do, cigarette smoking, alcohol, uh, caffeine, all these things are in response to what we're facing in our day to day. Well, I see the young man sitting in that audience right now saying to himself and saying to his TV set, I hear what you're saying and it's great that I can't stop, darn it. What do you do? What do you do? You need a methodology or a process or a method for controlling what happens to you in the day to day. Most of what we do on, on a daily basis is just go through life without thinking. And so the first thing that we've got to do is activate the brain computer. 
this marvelous little thing that we have upstairs that we don't use too much because we're so busy reacting to what we encounter. Give me an life. idea, a demonstration maybe as to how I can get my mind focused. Here I have three kids, my wife works, my kids, and now they're talking about Nanny, uh, uh, Nanny Gates. I can't even hire someone to watch my kids. They're running around the house, running around the house. My boss is worrying me to death because I got a report that's due on his desk. Or that guy down at the job keeps getting on my nerves telling me about his problems. How do I activate the mind to do anything to save my life? Okay, here's a simple way. And, you know, your listeners can try this right now as, as they're watching. Um, and that is first, don't watch. Close your eyes. Sorry, right, I'll be your boss. Okay. Watch this, folks. <laughs> little stress management. Not mine here. <laughs> All right. Close okay. your eyes. Close your eyes. The first thing we've done is we've closed the eyes. Therefore, we're not seeing anything. We're going within right now. Second thing is take a deep breath. And now exhale and release the breath. And then inhale again. And that means my stomach goes out. The right. Proper way of breathing. The lungs are, you're taking in oxygen. And you're releasing all the toxins, the carbon dioxide coming out of the body. And now you're becoming settled within yourself. Do you know I feel different? Actually, it does feel like there's a lightning or something. Absolutely, because a minute ago, the, the, the things you mentioned about the children screaming, the wife, all those were outside. All those were external. When we go within ourselves, we can find a little bit of peace. And when we learn to work with that inner peace, then the outside things don't affect us as much. You know one of the problems I have, a lot of people have, it's uh, I don't take time enough for myself. I don't sit down and do the things I'd like to do by, you know, listening to myself, inner self, as you say, and reading my inner self. Is that, is that good, bad, or what? You definitely need the time to do that. And that's, you know, there are many things that we can do. Religion offers one. It's called prayer. You know, we can get quiet. We can be in a very meditative state, read scripture, or doing something from a religious perspective. We can also read a magazine. We can turn on some music. There are a lot of things that we say help us cool out or become reflective or relaxed. But when we go to uh, the inner level of shutting down all the externals, we go into what we call meditation. And meditation is really the gateway to reducing stress because it puts us in a, in a state where we're no longer really affected by what is happening outside. We're aware of it but we lose that, that sense that we're, we're, we're uh, kind of like we're in the world, but not of it. We're, we're in the whole thing, but we're not really affected by it. Now, there's a whole list of alternatives here mm -hmm. to the things I read in the very beginning of this discussion. When I talked about allergies, arthritis, backaches, do you have any of those? I have them. I have these uh, pains every now and then, little problems here and there that I get into. Depression, that's one that we all suffer. And today, anything can depress you. So if you have to do your income tax, or especially when you go to get to the grocery store, or especially when you can't have your way in life. As Americans, do we do that too darn much? Do we try to have our way in life too much? Well, we're, we're groomed to, to feel that way. We're programmed to feel that way. As children, the children today are growing up with all kinds of media hype that's telling them they need this toy, they need this. Uh, they want to go to this movie. This I, I've got to have. I, I, I've, I've got, got to have. have. Speaking about programming, we're going to program out of here for just a few minutes. We'll be back with more from One Washington.